Welcome to Higher Praise. Bless the Lord. And may you be seated in the presence of God for a moment. Bless God for his faithfulness and his truth. Jesus said in the uh, book of John, the 16th chapter, verse 31, Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming. Yes, now has come that you will be scattered each to his own. You will leave me alone. And yet, I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. God's asking him in the in the midst of everything that that happens. And he's talking to them, the disciples, and he says, do you believe me now? And what he's saying is you're seeing all these things happening in your life, all these things that are happening in the world, all these things that are happening around you. He says, in this situation, do you believe me now? See, I want to when, when all hell breaks loose. And I literally mean that. When the demonic forces come against you and and they're and they're trying to when all that breaks loose do you believe me now do you still believe me in the midst of those situations in the midst when your reports from your doctor doesn't come back the way you want them to do you still believe me now right now everybody's good when everything's okay but do you still believe me now and he says now I understand that, that a lot of you, that, that you're going to scatter from me. You're going to, you, and the thing about it, you're going to go find a place to hide when, when everything breaks loose. And to those who don't know me, there, it's going to appear that I've been left alone. He says, but I'm not. I'm not alone. And I hope that we don't, how can I say, um, do this or, or repeat this again because stuff's about to break off here in, in the world more than we, we, we think. And you'll see people going to their own places to try to, to hide at the things that are, that are um, coming. And when they come, you're going to echo in your mind and say, do you believe me now? Like in Psalms 1, it says, do not sit in the uh, seat of the scornful or give place to, you know, uh, stand in the way of sinners. And, and so we're talking about there's all those people like they always said, you know, um, when's Jesus is doing this? What's this happening? What's this going to happen? And the problem is all of it's happening right, un, right underneath our eyes, right underneath everything that we're doing. But we don't acknowledge it as God. And then I'm trying to tell you that this day is not going to take you by surprise. He says it'll take many. But for you who know him, he says, you'll know when I'm knocking, even at the door. And for many, it'll take by surprise. Like, well, I didn't realize that. But for us who watch, well, the Bible is we're supposed to watch. But, you know, we're in a day and age where other Christians persecute you for watching. Look, y'all ain't got to be, y'all be quiet for long too, but they'll persecute you for, like, you know, I see God in it. I see God in it. Oh, man, you don't see God everywhere. No, I don't see the devil everywhere, but I see God everywhere. We, you know, we flip it. We, we see a devil under every, every rock. We, we profess we see the devil more than we see God. No, I don't see the devil. I see God everywhere. And I see the devil some places. Okay. And the reason why I say it, because the devil's not omnipresent. He can't be in every place at the same time. But God can. So, so, the, so the thing about it is we're looking and we're seeing all these things that are, that are, that are happening. But church people don't want to hear the report of what's happening. I don't want to talk about that. Some people will, will, some Christians will tell you they like their ignorance. 
Now, I don't, I don't even read that part of the Bible. That's kind of ooh, scary. I don't even read that part of the Bible. Dude, but it's good news for us who believe. Yeah, it sounds kind of scary, but it's good news for us who believe. Uh, you know? And, and so don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. One of those is not just to split our country, but to split the church on church things. So we have to understand that when we are doing everything that we're doing, we're doing it in remembrance of him. That's why we have to watch stuff with spiritual eyes. Because some things the Bible says can only be spiritually discerned. The flesh cannot discern them because they're spiritual in nature. And only the spirit can discern spiritual things. So if I say that I'm a Christian and I'm walking in the spirit, what does that mean? And that's a rhetorical question. I'm not asking you to say that, but there's a lot of different answers to do that. But what does that mean to walk in the spirit? And if we think that we're walking in the spirit, why are we so overcome with fleshly things? And if someone told you that you would fight them tooth and nail about how much you're in the spirit, but you're willing to whip them in the flesh. Hey, man, I'm like I'm by myself right now. Here we go. Here we go. But to be spiritual thing is to know when to leave something alone, know when to change something, know when to pivot, know um, um, to have a hunger for understanding. Listen, being and, and this is I, I don't know where this came from. I, I heard it first in the, in the 80s, whatever like this. Being hungry as a Christian is not a bad thing. I'd rather be hungry as a Christian than full and satisfied and not seeking. Okay, you guys, you guys hear, hear where I'm going right here. We think, well, I'm, well, I'm, you know, I'm not getting fed enough because when I leave that place, I'm still hungry. Well, you're supposed to be because you're always supposed to be hungry for the things of the Lord. You're always supposed to be doing that. It's the Christians who get so satisfied and full that they don't keep coming back and eating because we think we're satisfied. We think we got it figured out. We think we know what's going on and everything else in between. But give me some hungry saints in a fight any day. Give me some hungry saints. Because only thing that I know, full Christians will sleep on Jesus. You don't believe me? Ask him when he asks them to pray. Can't y'all just, just hang out and stay awake for half an hour? Just, we got you, we got you, yeah. He came back and he slept again, whatever. And so you might say, how's that analogy work? I'm glad you asked, I'm gonna tell you in a minute. But but you're going to say, you know, and they were, you know, they, they kept sleeping on Jesus. And he said, you know, sure, there comes a time. Jesus is fine, whatever. Let him sleep. And he got them all up and said, you know, you don't know the son of man's getting ready to be taken. X, Y, and Z. This is just um, my um, overview of this. OK. So the reason you say, you know, why do you know they were sleeping because they're hungry? Uh, because they were full. Because the bread of life was in their midst. Jesus is the bread of life. He is the word. And while they, were in the, while they were in his presence, they were full. Remember, you might say, Pastor, how do you get that? Remember when the Sadducees and Pharisees questioned Jesus. He says, why don't your apostles fast like everybody else's disciples? He said, they can't. He says, when I'm gone, There'll be plenty of time for fasting. But while I'm here, they can't. And you might look and you unpack that. How in the world would you want your disciples to fast from you? He says, I am the bread of life. I am the way and the truth. I am here for a certain time and they better eat. Because there will be a time where I won't be with you. And he says, there'll be time for fasting when I'm gone. But while I'm here, if my true followers, it's impossible for you to fast while you're in my presence. OK, let me let me take. The reason why we fast is to subjugate our flesh so we can move spiritually closer to God. Right. That's why we fast. But when God's presence is in the room, there's no need for fasting to get closer to God because you're already what? Closer to God. 
Okay, listen. Y'all gonna make it work for tonight. Okay, listen. That's like, I gotta use my wife as an analogy because it ain't gonna be me. That's like my wife in our pool. She's in the pool, floating in our pool, right, in the backyard. And my wife says, turn on the hose so you can get me wet. There's no need for the hose because she's in it. She's in the water, right? So it freaks me out when we feel a big move of God. Everybody says fast. No, that's not when you fast. There'll be fasting before or after. But once you're in the move, you're there to drink. They eat as much as God. Don't you dare fast on Jesus when he's moving on you. Because the purpose of fasting is breaking down all of this fleshly thing so you can get spiritually closer. And he was trying to explain that to the Sadducees and Pharisees. He said, they can't fast while I'm here. I am the bread. They, and you know why they couldn't fast? Because they, wouldn't, they physically wouldn't be able not to eat in the spirit while he's there. Because the spirit in them bears witness to that spirit and they would continually feed off of Jesus. Feeding off of Jesus means if they had to fast, that means I can't hear any of your words, Jesus. I can't follow you in your sermons because every place you go, it feeds me. Every word that, I, you know, a man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of what? The mouth of God. So in that thing is when we get in the presence of God, Make sure you understand what it means to be in the presence of God. There's time before and time after, but when we get in and God's doing his thing, he's doing his thing. And if anything else, it's fasting from people, not from God. But it's at a point that now do you believe when things start coming in a little bit more crystal clear, what God's doing and things start coming in more tangible. Are you believing? Now, I know what it looks like. It looks like my people done left me. He said, but who I got with me is more than the world against me. Amen. And Jesus didn't need them for backup anyway. Oh. He was going to go straight ahead anyway because he was sent into this world to do a certain task. And people thought he was weak because they didn't see other flesh behind him. Where's your apostles now? Whatever you go. Pfft. They were never part of my plan to make this happen. None of them helped him carry that cross. Only a couple witnessed it. Several denied him. He goes, they weren't part of, they weren't, they weren't part of the plan because you know why? If they were part of the plan, you would do them like other people do, do Mary. It's Jesus and then it's Peter, and then it's Mary, then it's Peter. No. He goes, I had to do this so you know who gets the glory. You know who died for you. You know who, who um, bared the sins of the world. So they had to kind of like take a back seat and let the son do his thing. Let him do his thing. And to let them know that there will be tribulation. Now I want to say this. The devil uses this so much to make you think that you're not walking a Christian walk. Every time there's tribulation, oh my God, tribulation is a punishment. God, what did I do? No, tribulation, he says tribulation is part of, is part of the job. Tribulation isn't a punishment. Okay, okay. In the world, you will have tribulation. It's like this. When you're flying in a, in a plane, you don't get turbulence because you're a sinner. It's part of the jet stream. It's what happens a lot of times to people who fly. You, we think because we go through tribulation, if everything isn't so smooth, if everything doesn't come to me without effort, it can't be God. We're Western countries are the only countries who think that way. Every other country knows it's a sacrifice because they go to jail. They don't get the rations. They don't get the same um, rights as other people in their country, other beliefs. Oh, they know it's a struggle and they thrive in it. But like I said before, I use this all the time. Sometimes if we don't get a parking space up front, we think of Jesus telling us not to go in. 
Oh my goodness, all the spaces are taken. Julie, I told you, uh, this is the Lord. This is the Lord. Cookout, we need to go do the cookout instead. This is the Lord. And you're laughing because you know people who think that way. You know, um, I was going to go through this conference. So I'm going to call get these tickets. Line's busy. I knew the devil was in that conference. No, it's so popular that there's a lot of people wanting to go. You just got to wait your turn. But they know it's Jesus. I knew I, I, I sensed the devil. I sensed it. See, the devil has us chasing our own tail. Is it really? Are we really hearing a sign from God? Sometimes I get with people. People say, God said this, this, this. OK. And I know it's kind of sketchy a little bit or it feels sketchy to me. So I stop you up and say, so, OK, OK. So tell me exactly what he told you. And there's two things. One, either they're not doing anything that the spirit has told them to do. Or they have interpreted so. And on the outside, you think, oh, well, that's pretty, pretty clear. You know, you know, I, like, yes, let's say spirit of God. Pastor, spirit of God, what my spirit of God told me, do not go down Western. So, OK, OK, what the spirit says. But then I'm saying, but why were you on Western then? Oh, because I went down all the way down to 28th and got on Western. So he didn't say nothing about that. He just did because what I saw in my vision was just this part of Western. But OK, then, OK, OK. And then I was, you know, I'm I'm going, you know, um, you know south to north, you know, in, in, in my in my dream. But my other time I was going North to south. So that's not what he meant. And that's, I said, so you got a wreck on Western. Yeah, but that's what part I saw. I said, so tell me exactly what he said. The spirit said, don't go down Western. Oh, well, how did you get on Western when the spirit clearly told you to stay off the street? Well, you know, um, well, there's that tanning place I like. And God didn't say anything about tanning. Just stay off of Western. Where's the tanning place at? On Western? So some guy broke in and shot it up. Yeah, can you believe that? Well, that's what God told you. And it's funny how we just twist things to be our gospel. You know, there's a lot of gospels out there. A lot of them have names, and half of them ain't Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. Some of them Rob, some of them Richie. Some of them named the Gospel of Kim, Gospel of Susie, where a lot of times, I was talking to brother, a lot of times this is what we do. It's easier in our mind, which it's not, it's easier in our mind to make our own gospel than to change our life to live by the gospel. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that, so I'll push it away. I don't want that. I'll push that away. Oh, so you, so you writing your own gospel now. No, why do you say that? Because you're not following this part of the scripture. Well, I just don't necessarily believe that. Who cares? It's not, it's not, it's not, he didn't, I don't believe, remember you being there, him, him consulting you, like, hey, dude, you like that? Okay, I can leave it out. And we don't want to be told anything. We don't want to be corrected. We don't want to help, whatever. And not even though those things would help our life. I heard Tony Evans tell, told something today, and I'll leave you alone. It's funny. I was listening to it on, on the way up. And he goes, his dad went, went to the doctor. Doctor says, um, well, you need to get in shape. You need to do this, do this, stop eating that. Work out more and do this. And the guy says, yeah. And so he asked his dad, he, says, he said, dad, he said, what'd you do? He goes, I changed doctors. <laughs> he goes, that's what we do to the gospel. It says, do this, do that. You don't want to do it, so you change your God. And you won't comply with what you need to do to get healthy. So you just say, well, you don't like the answer. You just change. You change to something else. And that's why I always say to people, are you worshiping the God of the Bible? You got to do that now. Or, uh, you know, people are, I believe in God. OK, straight. Let me hear what, you, you know, so we got to talk to my sister. So what God are you talking about again? God, like, that ain't the God of the Bible that I read about it. I know. What God are you worshiping? Oh, well, I don't believe all that stuff. We, we just do do this. Oh, dude, that's a different God. That's not Yahweh. Oh, I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus is okay with this lifestyle, that lifestyle. Well, that ain't the Jesus of the Bible. 
You must be talking about Jesus. Okay? But that ain't your Jesus. Yeshua of the Bible. And a lot of times people will tell you what you want you to hear because they want you to make you think you worship God. Oh, dude, I'm in there, whatever. And then when you start saying like, oh, dude, you ain't. People are like, I love Jesus. I say, oh, Jesus, I ain't walked into a church in 30 years. I'm... And then maybe just, you know, cuss at you with a little emphasis while they're trying to tell you how much a believer they are. Like, dude, I ain't trying to judge. I'm like, yes, I said, but, you know, do you actually know what you profess? Do you know what that is? You know? That's like me telling you I'm an Olympic swimmer, but I don't swim. <laughs> People say, do you know what swimmer is? And me, I'm saying, yeah, I'm an Olympic swimmer because I got tickets. I go to all the Olympic swimming. Dude, that don't make you a swimmer, Olympic swimmer, because you got some tickets. You don't get in the pool. Oh, no, that's crazy stuff. That's crazy stuff. You don't swim. Oh, I ain't a fanatic about it or nothing. I just watch it on, I watch it on ESPN. That's what I do. But I'm, I'm one of them. No, you ain't. The coach don't know your name. They don't know your name. You ain't even got a suit. Well, maybe you do, but you ain't got a suit, a legal suit. So the thing about it is when we do all of this, we do it in remembrance of God, not because of what he did 2000 years ago, but because of what he did yesterday. I remember this because what God did moment by moment, minute by minute. I do this for what God's done in my family. I, I, to remember what God's done in my family. I do this to remember that, you know, I'm gainfully em employed, that I, that I can eat this week. I do this in remembrance because I have a roof over my head. I do this in remembrance because he died for my sins. And that payment that he paid 2,000 years ago is still good today. So you, you got to understand, payment and payoff isn't like it is in, in America. Can I just, can I just blow, blow, blow your mind real quick and then we'll move on? Just, just blow your mind real quick. Because we, we're jacked up how we think of stuff. The reason why the Americans always think that it's Jesus plus something. I need to do, do, do more for God. Jesus plus for God. Because in America, you ain't never really had anything really paid off. People say, yeah, I do. I got my house paid off. You still pay taxes? It ain't paid off. You still pay electric? It ain't paid off. You used to pay up and pay off. Paid off means once, once you paid a certain amount, you never pay anything again. You got your car. You could have a car that's riding on three wheels, jacked up, but you still got to have a license plate and insurance on that puppy. So you and you might say, well, I still own it. No, you don't, because if you don't pay those, they take it away. You got your house. I got my house free, uh, free and clear. Oh, don't pay your property tax for, for um, three, three times to see if that house that you got paid for free and clear, they'll, they'll take your house for $4,000. And you might have a $2,000, uh, $200,000 home. And tell me how you own something. Oh, I own all this property. Yeah. But miss, but miss a payment on taxes to see if they don't come and get your, get your land. See, so it's hard for us to understand paid in full. So when Jesus said, I paid the price, that goes for anything else that would pop up. You know, any kind of taxes, any kind of accusations of the enemy, any kind of sin, and you repent. And when I say paid in full, it covers every blemish, every scar, every pitfall that would ever pop up in your life from the time that you get saved. So when Jesus says, I paid it all, he totally means it. I paid everything. Y'all like, well, you know, I'm just going to put something back just in case something pop up. There ain't nothing going to pop up that the blood can't cover. Yeah. Amen. Paid in full. But because we don't live in a paid in full society. I saw someone won the, the lottery. Said they won the lottery. They won $1.5 billion. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Because I'm here to tell you, 550 million comes off the top. Come off the top. That's federal. Depending on which state, you're getting another double digit millions. And that's not it. They will tax your money again next year. I'm like, dude, why am I paying money? I won that in 2023. Why in 2025 I'm still paying 
taxes on it because the government going to get every bit of it that they can. Use it. Let it gain interest. Well, you know what? No tax in that. No tax your gain. Let you buy a house. You don't even do anything. And your house's value go up. You try to sell it. They're going to tax you on capital gains because it gains something. Oh, the devil's for real. He's for real. I'm kind of upset now that I didn't talk about it and I didn't got myself all upset. I got to take communion. I'm mad. You know, that's why it's so hard for us to comprehend paid in full. Because we don't trust it. Oh, it's good. It's good worshiping Jesus. But other shoes going to drop. And you're like, man, dude, why are you? Why are you so best? Why are you? Think, uh, because we thinking of Jesus, we make him small. We thinking we think of him like our government or like another human being. But I trust you. When Jesus paid it all with his blood, he paid in excess. His blood is far more valuable than what your bill is. So it is over and above what you would owe to God. And when God requires payment, it's paid in full. Because before in the Old Testament was just like the taxes we have. You had to come up once a year and pay to get your sins covered. New Testament, I'm not going to cover your sins. I'm going to wipe them away. And that alone is why. We do everything that we do in remembrance of him. So at this time, we usually have prayer where people can go. You can come to the altar. You can stay where you are, whatever. But we have a time of reflection and prayer where we repent for our arrogance and our haughtiness, whatever, and come humble to God and say, God, prepare me to eat from the table. God, forgive me for making stuff what it wasn't supposed to be and X, Y, and Z. So it's a time of prayer. So at this time, You can go forth and wherever you choose to do, whatever you choose to do, have a moment of prayer and I'll come on the back end and pray and we'll sup together. Father, as we come into your presence, Father, and we ask, Father, that you forgive us of our worldliness, our hard of hearing, or just plain disobedience and that you would forgive us and allow us to come to your table. Father, allow healing to come through the communion, Father, and remembrance and admiration as we join on one accord like you did in the upper room. And bless your name. Bless your name for uh, saying okay that you would die for us and for uh, people who mostly wouldn't appreciate it and Acknowledge it. Bless your name for doing the healings and the miraculous miracles. Bless your name for uh, lying peacefully on that cross as they as they nailed you. Totally focused on the mission of redemption for your creation. My God, my God, my God, bless your name. For when you were in the borrowed man's tomb and said you first descended before you ascended, that you preached to the captives and you set them free, that you got struck by the power and the anointing of God and rose up from your bedclothes and walked out of the tomb when the stone was rolled away. Bless your name for appearing to us and supping with us and no fewer than 500 individuals to reassure them that God could lay down his life and pick it up again. Bless your name, your name, your name when you rose up to sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty who judges the quick and the dead. Bless your name for being an applicant in the courtroom every time the devil comes in in front of God to point an accusation to one of the believers that you are our advocate in the courtroom. You stand up and says, my blood covers all this. Come on, somebody. All that. Bless your name, God. Bless your name today. 
You didn't have to do it, but you did. Father, you you listen to when we talk back, when we don't follow your orders, when we do stuff of selfish means, when we hurt one another, but all you do is weep and reach out your hand for us to take it and be out of our sin. The Bible said if we had a thousand tongues, church, we couldn't tell it all. But that doesn't mean we can't try. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. There's no name above which is higher. Yeshua. Jesus. Christ. Emmanuel. My bright and my morning star, my lily of the valley. I wish I had somebody who truly would bless his name today. Could you get outside of yourself and bless his name today? If you could just wave your hand and bless his name today. I know some of you are struggling. Some of you had a bad week, but the antidote to your struggle and the antidote to your bad week is blessing his name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The brothers come up as we prepare the table, please. At the table where he went to the upper room. After Judas has went out to do the betrayal that he was going to do, he looked around and saw the rest of the apostles and the disciples. And they were breaking bread as is normal for Passover. He um, broke bread and he said, this bread is like my body. He said, it shall be broken for you. Then he took the cup. It wasn't anything... Fancy, just a clay cup full of new wine. And he said, this wine is like my blood and it shall be spilled for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask God right now that you would bless the cup. That you would um, bless the bread. And Father, that we would do this in remembrance of you. Now after they serve, I'm going to give you half. After they serve, then hold the cup so we may sup together. Amen. You serve that side, you can do that side. Thank you. Tip this over. <laughs> Two different kinds in here. Get your bread out. And said, This is my body that was broken for me. Take and eat the all of it and do this in remembrance of me. Open your cup. So this is my blood, which was shed on Calvary. Jesus said, Take thee. And drink the all of it and do this in remembrance of him. Father, we thank you. Truly thank you for your sacrifice. Father, I ask a blessing for every individual that's here. That your Holy Spirit hand should be placed upon their hand, head and pronounce a blessing upon each and every one of them. Be with them during the rest of the week. Father, allow them to hopefully have someone, invite somebody to come to service with them that hopefully may get saved. Uh, Put prayer in their heart all this week. And Father, protect them until we're able to meet again on one accord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you are dismissed. There is trash cans on your way out by the coffee um, bar. When you go out, if you throw that away, it would help with our cleaning. I so appreciate you guys. Thank you. You sure can. Hello, everyone. For everyone who loves to donate to Higher Praise Worship Center, we have a new text to give number. The text to give number is 888 364 4483. And then you text HPWC 812. HPWC 812. And it will prompt you how to give. God bless and thank you.